So I was recently sent the iFlyTech AI Note Air. And this is a really interesting e-ink tablet that talks a lot about some AI functionality as well. And honestly, I think it is a really nice feeling and well-made device. So let's talk about that first. So the design really reminds me of the Remarkable with that kind of all metal design, but honestly, the bezels are really slim for an e-ink device. The only one that has kind of a thick bezel is the top and it kind of blends in really well with the others because it's just the speaker grill cutouts at the top and then the bezel itself is all even, which visually looks very nice. I am a fan of how that looks. As opposed to the Supernote Nomad, yes, it's dead, but you'll get to see the bezels anyway. So <laughs> look at how much thicker those bezels are than compared to the AI Note Air here. I mean, that is like double the thickness. Even this bezel, which is the thickest, is probably a little over half the thickness of this bottom bezel here, which I think is the thickest on the Nomad. Yeah, these top and bottom aren't actually perfectly even if you look closely, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the sides are even, but these ones are not. So I really think this has a much better looking form factor and display than the Nomad. The screen size is also bigger, as you can probably tell, it's taller. The Nomad. The actual width of the overall device is basically the same, but because of how slim the bezels are, this is definitely more screen space. I believe this is a 7.8 inch screen, where this one is a 8.3 inch screen. So definitely a bigger display here. This I think is just the same size as an iPad mini, where this is a little bit less than an iPad mini. Now I think Supernote's design is a bit better for those who want to keep their devices really long term and replace the battery themselves or things like that. They really focus on that user replaceability and repairability where I don't think this design is made for that at all, but it's definitely thinner, it's definitely lighter, and it looks better. So this top button here has a fingerprint scanner built in. So if I click the button, it will unlock and scan my fingerprint all at the same time, which is really nice. Most of these devices don't have that level of security. You can usually put in like a passcode or something, but that is almost more annoying to do on an e-ink tablet because of how the screens aren't as responsive. So you're typing a code every time, that's frustrating. But a fingerprint scanner I can get behind. That you just click the button, leave the finger there, Oh, didn't do it quite as fast that time, but there you go. You see that it does scan your fingerprint before unlocking the device, which especially if you have more sensitive documents on here or whatever, it is just a nice to have. You can also turn it off if you don't like it. Then the stylus magnetizes to the side, which most of the e-ink tablets do have this method of attaching the stylus. Supernote is one of the exceptions with the pen loop thing that they have going on. But actually, with the cover that you can get for the iFlyTech AI Note, it actually has this hidden pen loop that you can fold out. But let me just show you this in the cover first before we do that. So how to attach it is these hooks right there, and there's slots on the side of the device. There's this actual physical attachment, not just magnetic, and you have to push the device down and you'll hear a click. That's when you know it's locked in. So you can actually swing this out and not even have the back cover magnetized to it and it will not fall off. So this tablet is not going anywhere when connected to this. And that way you can hide the loop whenever you want, or you can peel this back, fold out the loop, and there you go. Now you have a pen loop on the device. Now it's a pretty small pen loop, so it really is only made for this stylus. You're not gonna be able to get a chunky Supernote pen to fit in there. This is like the smallest of the Supernote pens, so it might go, yeah, no, that's not really gonna go easily. You could kind of fake it and put just the clip in, but that looks totally ridiculous. So it's really made for their stylus, and even that, it's a bit snug. And it's just an extra security layer to ensure that this pen is not gonna get knocked off because with a magnet, 
you definitely can put it in your bag in a certain way or something and it knocks the stylus clean off. I've had that happen to my Apple Pencil on the iPad all the time. I've had it happen on my Remarkable devices, all of that kind of stuff. So this is a nice option to have. I'm all for them having the best of both worlds. Magnetic connection for ease of use and the loop when you need the extra security. This whole setup right here is a really, really nice looking package. I love the logo they have on there with the metallic shine it has. I think they just did a really excellent job. If you notice a couple scuffs on my device, don't worry, yours will not come pre-scuffed. This is just because I was sent a used version of this device that someone else returned. And if you've been paying close attention to this video, you probably have noticed that there's a lot more purple going on in this room. As you can see, this purple chair behind me with some purple lights on it as well. I'm testing this chair from a company called Hoffrey, and they make these gaming chairs at pretty affordable prices. Now these chairs are kind of unique in some of the features they offer. They have built-in speakers, a lumbar support that has a vibrating massager with it as well. So all that is really neat. I will say sometimes the quality is not the top of the line here, but you're really getting what you pay for. These aren't the most terribly expensive chairs in the world and they really have a nice look to them. And if that's what you're going for is the look and the speakers are surprisingly good, then this is going to be a great chair for you. I actually use a portable battery to stick it in the back pouch here just to power this chair so I don't have to be tied down to any outlet or anything like that. You can, you can totally recline in this chair as well, but I will say it kind of just locks up at certain points so you can just recline to where you want it and then relock it and that's where you'll be recording. This chair will probably be in a lot of future videos as well. So if you guys are curious about more of a long-term review of it, I'd be happy to share my thoughts. Let me know if you think the purple lights on the chair is just too much purple. And if you want me to change it to something else, because I can go blue, I can go red or a brighter blue here and green. I can do yellow. I mean, this fancy remote lets me change it to basically anything here. So if you guys want something else besides just purple, let me know. Otherwise, I'm sticking with purple. So another really important thing to an e-ink tablet is how usable the software is. And I'm happy to report this is a pretty user-friendly software. It didn't take me long to get the hang of it. And it's also pretty simplistic, which I think for this kind of a device is good. It is built on Android 14. So a pretty recent version of Android, not top of the line, but good enough for everything it's doing here. And this is basically the main home page. It is the notes page and you can go back a step to the directory and actually create folders here and all that kind of stuff. I haven't done a lot of that. Then there's the schedule where you can actually sync calendars where it needs a network connection right now, but you can actually go in here and add your email or different calendar as well, which is really nice to be able to see that. You can see your to do's, some of your focus or things you've starred. And I think that's really neat because you can star anything in any note and that will show up here. And reading is where all your PDFs will go. And the main thing that's there by default is the user manual. And when you open the PDF for the first time, it will show you the guide of how to navigate a PDF if you're right-handed or left-handed, and you can confirm those settings. And then now if I have any questions about some of the hardware or whatnot of this device, I can look at that manual. Another thing that is great about this e-ink device that you won't see on a device like the Nomad is the fact that it does have a front light. So this is the low light version. This is the dark version. So it's a little more amber. This is one of the custom ones I did, which I just made it brighter. And you're not gonna be able to see that super well in this lighting, the studio lighting, but I will show some B-roll here as well to give a great example of when you'd want to use the front light. And that is a nice option to have because sometimes these e-ink tablets are almost too much like paper and you can't use them in certain scenarios. And it's nice to be able to have the option to turn that on. And I really think they did a good job of not making the display suffer from having a front light. There's not really much of a gap 
between the pen and the actual display itself. So they did a really good job engineering that front light. They also have a big emphasis on recorded notes. So it has a microphone here as well. When you have an internet connection, it will also start transcribing everything for you. And then you can take physical notes along with it. It's actually pretty quick when you're connected to internet of how fast this actually works. Or I should say, how quickly this is connecting and working. It's very, very impressive. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it would be much, much slower, but it's doing quite a good job transcribing this conversation. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. So it is really optimized for being a transcription tool, great for meetings, great for students or anyone in lectures and anything like that. It is a very helpful tool for that. Even, hey, you're at church Sunday morning, you're taking notes from the sermon. Like this is a great thing. You could have a recorded version of it and be taking notes all at the same time. So it does not have offline transcription, which is a, a bit of a shame, but as soon as you connect to a Wi-Fi source, it will do that for you. You can chat with the built-in chat bot here. I actually asked it what LLM it is, and it was basically telling me that it is a version of ChatGPT4, and it's been modified a little bit, but it is good at these kinds of things. So writing and editing, answering questions, language assistance, creative writing, problem solving, and coding help other recommendations, conversational engagement. So it's a pretty full featured chat bot built into the device itself. So when you have an internet connection, you can have it transcribe it immediately and it will kind of put a rush on it and upload your recording and then give you a great transcription. It also does handwriting to text does it in the background automatically. So when I tap this one button, it will show you what it's translated here. The better your handwriting, the better this is. This is not the best handwriting to text that I've seen in an e-ink tablet. I think Supernotes is actually more accurate or at least it's better at reading my handwriting. My handwriting is not the best though. So I don't blame it for some of the mistakes it made here. It said a Vili instead of really. And to be honest, that R kind of looks like a V. So like, I don't really blame it there, but I would say the more accurate it can be, the better. And the better you write, the better it will be as well. But yeah, I find that interesting that it will pretty much always be converting that in the background. It probably makes the battery life drain a little faster than some e-ink tablets, but it's still not bad. I've used it for about a week now and I'm still at like 41% battery and I charged it to 100% when I got it. So it's a pretty accurate reading of about a week. Now I'm not doing heavy use five hours a day here either. So I'm using it a few hours there, a few hours here, but I have been using it almost once per day. The AI features, are neat. It has a built-in chatbot here that you can access by holding this button and swiping over. Let me redo this prompt here with actually having internet. It takes a little bit to generate the answers. I will say it's not as fast as I probably would like it to be. It could be partially because of the e-ink screen trying to catch up with it, but I think it honestly is just the model they're using is not quite as fast as the latest and greatest ChatGPT 4.0 in the native app from OpenAI. It's, just, it's never gonna be quite the same. And having this here is pretty nice and you can easily copy these things and put them into your notes if you're in a notebook as well. And that's kind of the idea of this is you have some AI tools at your fingertips. It's mostly the transcription stuff that they're talking about with AI, but having this chat bot here is nice. It's not gonna be something I use all the time, to be blunt. This is, I don't think of e-ink tablets as like, oh, that's the perfect place for AI. And I don't even think that's a big enough selling point over the Supernote devices. I do think the build quality, how this looks, 
the bigger screen, the quality of the screen, having a front line, all those things are bigger selling points in my opinion. And then there's other, wow, it's still going here, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna stop this generation for right now. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's thorough, it gives you lots of details and it definitely answers the question well that I asked. So the other kind of neat thing about the software is some of the smart commands you can do with the stylus. So if you go to this tool at the top, it shows you what the smart pen can do. So if you circle something, it will lasso select it. If you draw a star, it will do that mark attention, which showed up in that schedule area we saw earlier. And then if we draw a circle, it creates a to-do, which shows up in that to-do area. And drawing a triangle creates a title. So Supernote has a way of using the lasso tool and you can create like events from it, you can create to-dos from it, but I don't think it actually works as well as this company's. So let's say I want to get groceries later. Then all I have to do is use the button on the pen that will also trigger this tool. And I draw a circle on the same line and it highlights that whole line. It gives you this little prompt for the first time that you use this and you can say, got it. And now this is a to do, or let's say the title of this thing is the Masters and Martyrs TTRPG up here. If I want to just draw a triangle, there we go. And again, it can give you this little prompt describing what it is. I can say, got it here. And now if you look at the title, you see this sub heading of Masters and Mars, and that will always take you to this page, which is very nice. Supernote has headings as well, and I think they do that one really well, but this is pretty much as good as those headings. And I like the little shape shortcuts that you just draw when you draw them right. <laughs> it, I think it's quicker to activate than some of Supernote's features that way. And I don't really like how Supernote does to-dos. It's very easy to forget that they have them, it's just buried in the lasso selection so for example if i select this the lasso tool here i can join the to do i can do an ai search on it i can clear i can cancel or i can move it and whatnot but it doesn't have all those things baked right into the selection you actually just do a little shortcut and now that is a to do so i think that's a better way of doing it and I'm gonna remember to use it more and it's also all in line. Yeah, you can even check them off in line and you cannot do that on the Supernode device. So really nice software, smart features there. Those are some of my favorite parts about using this device. I think the lines are good and customizable. You can make them pretty small. So this is the line medium. You can also go line small, which I probably would write with more often because I like to maximize the amount of space I can get on screen. Oh, the back of the stylus is also an eraser as well. So overall, first impressions of this device after a week of use have been really positive. I've been enjoying my time with it. I think the software is what you need it to be. AI features are kind of over-marketed, but that's kind of how all AI features are nowadays. They work though, and they do what they say they're gonna do, and everything else feels full featured and like a good yink tablet. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and comment down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel. It really does help us to grow and reach more people. And if you like the shirt I'm wearing, if you like the Graphex Tech logo or anything like that, definitely go to graphxtech.com and look at all the merch options that are there. Hopefully something up there is something you'll like, or if you want a piece of clothing or a certain style with the Graphex Tech logo on it, comment that below as well. I can easily add more things to that site as well. Or if you have a Supernote Manta device, not this Supernote, but the bigger one, check out my custom pen loop for it as well, because I think that will really improve your Supernote life. It has improved mine with the device, and I am never going back to the standard pen loop. Thank you guys for watching, and of course, have a great rest of your day.